I love you back. Head close to it. Night. And something evil's lurking in the dark. Uh, under the moon. Light. You see uh, a sight that almost stops your heart. You try to scream. Oh. But terror takes a sound before you make it. You start to freeze. As horror looks you right between eyes. You're paralyzed. Cause this is thriller. Thriller night. And no one's gonna save you from the beast I'm about to strike. You know it's thriller. Duh. You're fighting for your life inside a killer thriller tonight. Man, I just I just love that. Um, I can't get enough of that. Thank you, Barack Obama, for starting the Freedom Friday show for us. Hey, I'm your host, Paul. Miss Kapow is out today. She's busy. She's got some other stuff to do. So I'm going to handle the show very succinctly and briefly, but as mean and nasty as usual. Um, Today's date is Friday the 15th, 2016. I'm going to entitle this show, The TV Portals, The TV Portals, and I'm going to talk about one particular article. Instead of doing a bunch of news, I'm going to talk about one thing that really does affect all of society, and it affects us as biblical Christians if we get involved in this stuff. It will open demonic doors. It will bring curses. It's going to bring problems in our lives. I recognize this. Um, It's entertainment that you see on TV, but it goes beyond being entertained. It's actually very demonic. It's very Luciferian, and it does open us all up to demonic influence and control and curses on our lives. And I'm going to explain that to you. But first, I want to read to you the scripture that will go directly with this. I mean, there's so many, but we're going to go to Proverbs, the very first chapter, And as you know, Proverbs talks more about evil than it does good. It talks about evil in the sense of recognizing and exposing it as wisdom. All right. So this is out of the Peshetta Bible, the Aramaic translation. Uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 1, and I'll start with 22. It says, how long, children, will you love child Childishness, childishness, and you mockers desire mockery, and you fools hate knowledge. If you turn to my reproof, this is wisdom talking, I shall bring forth my spirit to you, and I shall show you my word. Hmm. For I have cried, and you have not believed. And I have lifted my voice, and you have not listened. And you despise all my counsels, and you were not pleased with my reproof. I also shall laugh over your destruction, and I shall rejoice when tumult and destruction suddenly comes upon you. And your destruction will come like a hurricane, and when trouble and adversity comes against them. Then they will call on me, and I shall not answer them. And they will come early to my presence, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge. And they did not choose the worship of Lord Jehovah. And they did not choose my counsel. And they have rejected all my reproof. And they will eat of the fruit of their ways, and they will be filled with their counsels. Because of this, the turning away of the children will kill them, and the error of feeble minds will destroy them. And he who hears me will dwell in hope and will be quiet from the multitude of evils. Okay, that's a mouthful, guys. But you understand, wisdom is saying, God is saying, there are people out there who despise God's word. 
They despise his instruction. They despise his wisdom. They despise his reproof. When he tries to correct people and get them on the right path so that they don't die and spend eternity in hell, that they can have eternal life. When he tries to correct them, they mock. They make a mockery out of it. They reject it. See, like I was saying last week, people just don't wake up and go, oh, I'm going to molest a child. I'm going to be a pedophile today. Or I'm going to wake up and you know what? I just want to I just want to be, you know, I don't want to find the first guy with a big beard and I just want to just kiss him. I want to be gay. You don't wake up one day and that happens. You don't wake up one day and go, you know, I'm just going to go rape and pillage. I'm going to go murder somebody. It comes from increments of rebellion and rejecting truth and mocking God's laws and totally suppressing those things, those protections that God has put in place for the human to keep demons out and to keep demon possession from happening. And those things were, are constantly repressed and then the doors are opened. And when the portals are open, demonic entities do take over a person's life. They take over their heart, their minds, their souls, and they start controlling their bodies because of their thoughts. So then then they decide, hmm, I want to be gay. I think I was born gay. Then they decide, well, I, I, I'm, I'm a woman. I'm going to trans, I'm going to be a, a, a transgender. And then like we talked about last week, this dude who then thinks he's a dragon, he turned into a reptile, totally demonic. See, Satan is the father of lies. He's the chief liar. It's all about lies. Lies are deception. Lies are not truth. Deception is based on a lie. You could never deceive anybody with truth. You can only deceive them with lies. The chief liar is Satan. That's how he operates. It's all a lie. It's deception. It's illusion. The end game is destruction of the human soul forever. The end game is he wins when humans elect eternal death rather than eternal life. It is that simple. Regardless of religion, forget religion, forget the churches, forget what you've been taught about Christendom. There's one way to God the Father for eternal life, and that is through him made flesh on earth, and he sacrificed divine blood, accepting that, knowing that knowledge, that leads to your salvation. The beginning of wisdom is, is the fear or the awe of God. Once that happens, he begins to change your spiritual character. You begin to change. You're no longer the person you were. And little by little, you change. And these things drop off of you that cause death. And then you become a children of light. Okay? So, saying all of that, we are in a world of hurt here globally. We're in a world of hurt here in America, politically, educational wise, judicial. I mean, we're uh, economically, we're, we're in a big mess because we have, we have rejected God's counsel. We've not believed him. We've not listened. We've despised his counsel. We were not pleased with the reproof when he tried to correct us. So calamity's coming, folks. It's it's coming. When it does, God's going to laugh over our destruction. When I say our, I mean as a society, not me personally, and not you if you are a born-again, Bible-based Christian. You're following Christ biblically, the real Yeshua HaMashiach. You're following him and not a Cheez-Its. You won't worry about that because... When you hear the Lord, you're going to dwell in hope and you'll be quiet from the multitude of evils around you. All right. I only yell about it every week just to warn people and to expose evil and to let them know right where we're at. 
that this isn't a game and it's not getting better. It's only getting worse. Destruction is coming, folks. In different ways, it's coming. You look at our election cycle here in America, it's coming. No matter how you slice it, I don't care who you want to vote for or who you choose, the the elite are guiding, they're telling people who they're going to have. That's what's happening. And it's 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 unprecedented in history, in American history, this kind of political behavior. And these evil, evil men are, are exposing themselves. It's going to end up bad. This is going to end up bad. Things are going to change rapidly, rapidly, rapidly in this country. And when sudden destruction happens, God's going to laugh. It's going to come upon us like a hurricane. It's going to be trouble, adversity. It's going to come against us. And then people, there are going to be some people who may call out to God, but he's not going to answer them. They're going to go try to find him, but they're not going to find him. You know why? Because they hated his knowledge, his wisdom, and they did not choose to worship the Lord Jehovah. And what does that mean, to worship the Lord Jehovah? Does that mean just... uh, you know, go to your mega church and uh, listen to the rock band and raise your hands and, and jump up and down with the smoke pots. No. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, it says, the worship of Lord Jehovah is hating evil. The worship of Lord Jehovah is hating evil. You get that? Pomp. Who's pompous? Think about who's pompous. Think about the word pompous, pomp. Who's pomp? That's arrogant. How many people are arrogant and pompous? That's evil. Pride. Think about pride. Who's prideful? Think about the the media, the bankers, the politicians, the false church pastors and preachers. They're prideful. They're pompous. The evil way. What's the evil way? The evil way is going the way of the world. Everything that's not of God is the evil way. And the perverse mouth. God hates. Chapter 8, verse 13 of Proverbs says, The worship of Lord Jehovah is hating evil, pomp, pride, the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. The perverse mouth I hate. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So having set that up for you, and that you've heard the scripture, and you've heard the word of the Lord, and you hear what wisdom is saying, wisdom is saying have understanding, be wise, be knowledgeable in God, because the beginning of wisdom is the awe or fear of the Lord. The rest of it's all nonsense. It's going to lead to eternal death. And we're in a big world of hurt. So we're going to begin to look at what's going on today with the perverse mouth, the the pride, the pompous, the evil way. All of these are the antithesis of the worship of God. Now, we expect the world to go this way. In, In fact, sometimes we're even shocked that it does that people would be so simple-minded and so feeble-minded to find this entertainment and to allow this into their minds and into their spirits. It's amazing. But what's even more amazing is that Christians, non-biblical Christians, may find this entertaining. And we really have to be careful about what we're allowing in, what portals we're opening Because we are going to bring curses on ourselves. And it's easy to go, well, it's just entertainment. It's just, I don't believe this stuff. But you will notice with these shows, if you watch them in series, begin to watch them, the first seasons that start, they're okay. They're not too bad. Most of them don't shock your senses right away. But as the seasons progress and they, they progress the characters, They need to do more and more to shock the audience, to get more ratings, um, you know, to one up one another. And the immorality and the evil is just reached unprecedented heights in, in our society. It's unbelievable. And then when 
we read stories on the news and do Freedom Friday about all the wickedness on the earth, then we, you know, you wonder why. How, how, how did four guys end up raping a nine-year-old girl in Utah last week? Why, why her mother, while her mother was in the garage doing meth with some guy she, she met, you know, in a meth bar. How does that happen? How does it happen that Bruce Jenner dresses like a woman and calls himself a transgender and has his own reality TV show that people actually watch and sponsors pay for advertising time on? How, how do we get to that point? How does that happen? Well, after this commercial break, I'm going to tell you how that goes on. I'll be right back. I just finished reading the ebook Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, written by Paul and Linda Villanueva, and I highly recommend it to all Kingdom Against Powers of Wickedness radio listeners. This book is about saving your marriage from destruction. It is a true and vivid account about adultery, witchcraft, curses, spells, and evil spirits, all attempting to dismantle and annihilate lives. This is an excellent training manual for building a stronger marriage by exposing the tactics your enemies use against you. Ultimately, the book glorifies the transformational power of God through submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is a good thing. Demons in My Marriage Bed is priced at $2.99 and is available as an ebook from all online digital retailers such as Amazon.com and Apple iBooks. Other formats for reading on your computer or printing out the book are available at FifthHookMedia.com. That is F I F T H O O K Media.com. Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, changed the way my spouse and I conduct spiritual battle and has increased our alertness level to the tactics of Satan. Please do not be fooled that such things cannot happen to you. Rather, get prepared and become the spiritual warrior needed to overcome in these perilous times in which we all live. God bless you all. Okay, I'm back. Quit messing around. Go get Demons in Our Marriage Bed, true story of spiritual warfare. It's not only Paul and Linda's testimony. I mean, you got to know who we are. Why you? Why are you listening to us? You got to know where we came from, why we're so nutty. Um, it, it will explain why I do a show like this. But it also was a training manual at the end. It's like how to deal with these things out of your life. And you don't have to be married. It's not for married couples. It's for everybody. It just, the story just happens to take place within our marriage. But it's, Demonic attack is demonic attack. Anyway, you can get it on um, Amazon as a paperback or a ebook. Go to fifthhookmedia.com and under books, there's a code for $2 off from Create Space and you can order it there. So quit messing around. Just do it. Just do it. Will you please? Okay. A gal named Maureen Callahan, April 10th, 2016, she wrote an article for the New York Post entitled, TV shows are going way too far to attract viewers. And this is what we're going to talk about, because I want you to keep in mind the scriptures I read in Proverbs about wisdom and about knowledge and about rejecting his knowledge and how that brings destruction. And when it does bring destruction, the people that call out to God, they won't reach him. He's going to laugh at their calamity, okay? Because they've chose not to worship him. How do you worship God? Like I said in Proverbs 8, 13, by hating evil, by hating evil. It's really that simple. It's not complicated. But let's look at how easily we're all duped and how especially the world is duped. I know that you're a Kapow radio show network listener, so you're not duped. You wouldn't be listening to the show if you were stupid. I I, I mean, I don't want to be mean, but you know, you're, you're, you're spiritually more intelligent. You're just, you're more intelligent because you're, you're listening. You're looking for, for truth and wisdom and things of the Lord and, um, things that encourage you and exhort you and help you in this life as you sojourn. Okay. Getting into eternal life. So I know I might be preaching to the choir, but this could help. And at least, at least you're going to realize what's going on out there, even if you don't 
watched this stuff or never even heard of this stuff. I've never heard most of this stuff, but I will admit, and I'll tell you when I've watched some of these shows, I will tell you because I'm not a hypocrite. I'm going to tell you when I've watched some of these things and what my take on it when, when I saw these stuff. Okay. So Maureen starts off her article and he says, she says that for nearly two decades that we've been told that this is the golden age of television. The smartest, deepest storytelling, the most nuanced and morally complex characters are found right here in the golden age of television. But she says it's time for reconsideration. And this this article that she writes is absolutely shocking when you read it because she's put it all together for you. Uh, And even though it's not a Christian, um, (laughs) it's not a Christian article, it's going to blow your mind when you look at it spiritually. She says that Thursday night on ABC's Scandal, there's a character, her name is Olivia Pope. I've never seen Scandal. I've never heard of it, but there's a show called Scandal. Olivia Pope is the protagonist. She's a long established in the show's vernacular as a white hat or a good guy. Well, guess what she did last Thursday night? She beat a wheelchair-bound stroke victim. A wheelchair-bound stroke victim she beat to death by pulping his face with an aluminum chair. It was a lengthy scene, and even for a Shonda Rhimes soap, that's, I guess, the person who produces it or writes it, that bills itself weekly on, oh my God, twists, Gruesome scenes of torture and dismemberment, politically expedient murders and illegitimate war, rape, kidnapping, blackmail, and one interminable scene where an imprisoned terrorist chewed through her own wrist to escape. This one was morally and artistically bankrupt. So people are watching this show. They're seeing torture, dismemberment, blackmail, kidnapping, war, rape, murders. They're seeing all this stuff. But when they saw the show last Thursday with the character Olivia Pope beating to death a wheelchair-bound stroke victim, they thought it was too much. They, they, the people were repulsed by this. The Onions AV Club said, one of the worst things I've ever seen on television. I mean, this is good that, that, that even the world is going, what in, what in the heck are these Luciferians doing? I mean, it just shows you that there are some out there that might still have a spark, still have a spark of some intelligence that are not so simple and feeble-minded that they find this entertaining. Um. Another another paper or another site called Vulture said, uh, making live an outright murderer? Come on. Although knowing this show in about three episodes, it will be as if this never happened. So the writer goes on. She says, today the golden age is in the throes of the arms race with showrunners attempting to outshock their audiences week to week, churning out melodrama without consequence. Now, I personally think it goes beyond that. I do, I do agree with her that they keep, they keep having to outshock their audiences in order to uh, keep viewers engaged and to make more advertising dollars. It's all about the money. It's all about following mammon. And I do agree with that. But I think there's a spiritual side to this. I think it's plain old Luciferian. The portals have been open. The, the advent of the television, a way to come into people's homes and not only come into your homes, but to come into their minds and into their hearts and into their souls through this box. And now we have cable and satellite and however you want to watch it. It's the world coming directly at you with all the Luciferian philosophies just hitting you right in the face and, you know, Uh, How many hours do people watch TV a day? You know, four to six hours a day. 
and it's going to affect society. And then we wonder, why is everybody so stupid? I mean, they're stupid. Why are our college university kids so stupid? Why are they just doing stupid things and, and crying about because someone wrote on chalk, you know, Trump 2016 and they were traumatized and now that, you know, they peed their pants and now they're in a corner and they need counseling. I mean, how how did our kids get that way? Well, Proverbs said that the children would kill us. Yeah. Yes. And that the error of our ways would destroy us. That's what it says. Now, how does, how does the children, I mean, how, how does that happen? Because it happens incrementally, incrementally, uh, in increments. Dang it. Where's Miss Kapow? She would have helped me out. In verse 31 of Proverbs 1, it says, and they will eat of the fruit of their ways and they will be filled with their counsels, right? Their own counsel. See, because, because they know better. They don't want anything to do with God. These, these are, these are us. These are our children, our grandchildren, but it's not only us, it's our parents and our grandparents who've done this. And so because of this, the turning away of the children will kill them. Well, that's why our kids are so goofy. That's why we're goofy compared to the generation before. And the error of feeble minds will destroy them. The error of feeble minds will destroy them. Look at what's going on politically in America. These men in the GOP, I'm not even talking about the Democrats. Let me, you know, I'm not, I haven't even touched, I didn't even have a touch socialism yet, but look what the men, these stupid men in the GOP are doing. They are destroying this country because the error of their feeble minds, they're feeble minded because they serve a very unwise God. They serve a stupid God. They, they have no wisdom. Let me continue with the article. Maureen writes, last week on HBO's Girls, that's another show I've never watched or heard of. There's a show on HBO. I don't have HBO. I don't have Showtime. I don't have any of this stuff. I do have expanded cable. I have basic cable with the additional, I don't know, 80 channels or whatever like that. I get a bundle. I get internet. I get phone. And I get cable for one price. I have that. I don't have HBO or all this stuff. Um, Linda and I, and I'm not trying to be cooler, Linda and I spend most of our time when we watch the television screen, we're on the internet watching um, we're watching YouTube videos of different, different things, religious things, uh, not religious things, you know, Christian um, uh, channels. Uh, one of our favorites that we get on there and watch, try to watch all of his stuff is um, oh, uh, Michael uh, Michael um, Hoggard. I call him Hoggy, Hoggard. Uh, things like that. So we do that. I'm not, and I don't say that. Oh, look how righteous we are. Everything because we do watch some some junk. Sometimes I'll go through the cable channels and I'll see this junk. I talk about it. Um, sometimes I'll watch some Netflix, but we stay away. And Linda's a lot better at this than I am. I mean, she can she can spot something right off the bat, and she'll go, "Oh no, 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 no! I don't, I don't dig that." You know, I don't dig that. And then I'll look at it and go, "Shut it down, shut it down," and we shut it down. And it's just getting it's getting harder and harder just to find anything that just entertains you that's clean. Um, we used to love comedians, and it's hard to find a clean comedian. I don't like the Christian comedians. I, I think that's goofy. You know, a Christian community, that, and, and that's a big thing. They go, these churches love Christian magicians and comedians. But um, I, I think that's a real misnomer. I don't, I don't like that. Um, but it's, it's hard to find a good, clean comedian. Um, Brian Regan, I haven't heard him in a long time, but he used to be real clean, and I enjoyed his stuff. But it's, it's hard to find that uh, because they always go to the lowest level of depravity for a laugh and it's just um it's not necessary and it's not funny but it just shows where we're going where we're heading where we're at and it's only getting worse and worse it just gets worse so on last week's hbo's girls lena dunham hannah she was teaching at a junior high school and she responded to her principal's warnings about unprofessional behavior and you know how she did that she exposed her vagina to him and to the audience. 
and that's entertainment. Um, outlandishly, apparently, it saved her job. So this is the stuff that's um, that's that's being promoted as entertainment. Here's another show I never heard of, nor have I watched. It's called Mr. Robot, and it's on the USA program. One character strangles another to death during a rooftop trist for no discernible reason. Just does, just murder. And then his pregnant wife then stabs herself in the uterus with a fondue fork to induce labor when the cops arrive. I don't make it up. That's what it says. His pregnant wife stabs herself in the uterus with a fondue fork to induce labor when the cops arrive. Really? The sophisticated spy thriller, The Americans, never watched that, features a plot line about a grown man seducing a 15-year-old girl. Carrie Matheson, she's the anti-heroine of Homeland. She fell in love with a terrorist, had his baby, then tried to kill the infant. She kept custody and continued, of course, to work with the U.S. government. Okay, now this next show is one that I have seen. And this is one of those shows that started out and it's 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 written very intriguing. I mean, it's fantasy obviously. The House of Cards. It's on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. The House of Cards. But it's one of those shows when it started off on season 1, it started off filthy, man. And you know, Linda was like, "Ah, what? We can't watch that. We can't we can't do that. And um, it's, I can't even tell you what the, the stuff that they started off with, but it was like every episode was some kind of bizarre sex scene. It was horrible. Just horrible. House of Cards. You know, it's unfortunate because the actual premise of the show would be good without all this shock value, you know, this immorality. Um in this, in this last recent episode, apparently, of House of Cards, First Lady Claire Underwood, whom we're meant to find more sympathetic than her amoral homicidal husband, Frank, she kills her mother via a lethal injection during, during an election cycle for voter sympathy. <laughs> um, and these characters, apparently, are loosely based on the Clintons, believe it or not. Um, the writer says... The scene is played straight. It's somber, all amber hues, meaningful looks. We are meant to infer guilt and regret if, if, as if that makes it okay that she kills her own mom for political votes. Okay. So anyway, you know, you can go on and on and talk about all the shows. I mean, we could talk about the cartoons that are out there and all these shows and just how evil it is and why we shouldn't get sucked into that. Right. But there's more to it. I mean, we know that as biblical Christians, you know, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You're watching that box and you're, uh, you know, flicking through some entertainment, trying to watch America's home videos or something, you know, and you run across this nonsense, you know, you, you, you'll you recognize it. And when your, your spirit says, shut that down, you shut it down because you don't want to open that up. You don't want to get drawn into these things and get addicted to a show or a series where they're doing this kind of stuff and it's it's getting into your head and it's getting into your home and your spirit it does open up portals and it it's one of the ways that it's making people insane our society is insane and they're doing some crazy insane things and it's scary when i read about these shows to think that somebody next to me in a car or at walmart or in a restaurant maybe watching these shows and acting and could act out that character. I don't watch that show. So I don't know. I don't know what they, what that did, but they could just act it out and go, I'm a sociopath. I'm a psychopath. I'm going to do this thing. And, and, it, and it's frightening because you don't know what's in their head mixed in with, you know, their drugs and antidepressants and some booze, alcohol, some meth. And you got a cocktail of, uh, demonology sitting right next to you but this article goes on even deeper and this is something i did not know because here's another show that we have never seen i have never seen this show i have never watched a single minute of it 
I know who, I recognize who acted in it, the actor, because he always irritated me. This actor always irritated me because off screen, when he was interviewed or in a paper or something, he always acted like a tough guy, like the character he played. And that annoyed me because he acted like he was some kind of real mafia guy and um, some really mafioso or something. I was like, you're nothing but an actor. Shut up. The Sopranos. I've never seen The Sopranos. 1999. It came out in 1999. But why is that important? Well, this writer says in a post-Sopranos landscape, moral transgression automatically signifies high art. What? Moral transgression automatically signifies high art. So the more immoral, the worse characters can become on these entertainment boxes, the more to the producers of these things, it, that it signifies that it's high art. You see how you know, the Bible says good will be called bad and bad will be called good. You see how everything's upside down? Everything's upside down in Satan's world. It's amazing. This is high art. Infanticide. The killing of a baby. Incest. Pedophilia. Matricide. The killing of your mother. Torture. Rape. Castration. Cannibalism. Mass murder. All are now commonly employed means to signify quality. Can you believe that? Since the Sopranos. And here's what's important. I never knew this because I never saw that show. Plus, in 1999, I was totally unaware of any of this stuff. I was too busy working for a living, trying to make a lot of money and make more money and just keep making money and so I could buy stuff and just keep spending stuff and, you know, you know, just do life. I was young, crazy, and uh, I just wanted to just keep climbing, 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 keep doing it. So I wasn't even paying attention to uh, to anything. So in 1999... Sopranos came out. That wasn't something I was watching. I was doing other stuff. But it's almost, she writes that it's almost hard to fathom how far we've come in such a short time. Now, this this is an author named Brett Martin, and he wrote a book called Difficult Men, Behind the Scenes of a Creative Revolution. And he agrees that The Sopranos, which did premiere on HBO in 1999, that that show is responsible for the programming we see today. I never knew that. See, that was a portal that was opened in 1999 that we were just totally unaware of. We're just living life, you know, uh, without Christ, without the wisdom of God, just churning along, and we had no idea what happened to society, what was going on with us. But Satan knew. Satan knew it's all part of his his plan. It's it's to disintegrate all barriers, all natural barriers, all spiritual barriers for demonic possession. Babylon has fallen. She's become a cage of every unclean bird, says Revelation. So the Sopranos is responsible for the program we see today. Before Tony Soprano, that's the actor, whoever acted that guy, he was the dude that always irritated me. Every time I saw him, because he was always acting tough, like he was a real mafia guy. I was like, you're just an actor. Shut up. But he was always like a tough guy. It just was annoying. So it says, before Tony Soprano, American TV audiences had never been so consistently, okay? There was bad things, but they'd never been so consistently exposed to a charming psychopath, one who so nimbly evoked fear, revulsion, sympathy, affection, and horror. Wow. The degree to which the Sopranos and its kind were a shock is incredible, Martin says. We're still in the grips of that. Now, the Sopranos spawned a hunger for anti-heroes. So in 1999, there was a paradigm shift in the American mind and also the global mind because the globe gets American television. It's all made here. 
It's all made here in Hollywood. It spawned a hunger for anti-heroes. The Shield, Damages, Dexter. I never heard of any of these shows. Dexter, I would see the 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 DVD covers at Walmart of Dexter. And isn't he always killing somebody or something? Isn't he like a doctor by day and a mass murderer at night? Something crazy. I wouldn't watch that. Uh, a show called Rescue Me. Mad Men, Breaking Bad. That's the other show I saw. I did see Breaking Bad. It was incredible because it did start off where you felt sorry for Walter White. Here he is, here he is. And as it progressed, he became this sociopathic, murdering, dope dealing. Oh, man. It got bad. Sons of Anarchy. Never watched that. Walking Dead. Never seen that. Homeland. House of Cards. I have seen some of that. The Americans. No. Girls. No. Unreal. No. Robot. And of course, Game of Thrones. Never heard of that. I mean, I've never seen that. But apparently, that's a big one. And those are just some of the, the direct descendants of The Sopranos. This, this is all nasty, nasty stuff. Each of these shows is peopled with characters that range from sinister to sociopathic. Anyone remotely sympathetic in these worlds is always the stooge, the too trusting idiot who elicits contempt from the audience. Isn't that just like Satan? Huh? There's, o- there's always a price to pay. It, this stuff never comes free. See, Satan doesn't give free gifts. His Gnostic lie isn't free. You do die. You do die. In November, the Atlantic ran a bracket, quote, to find the most terrible person on television. And there were 32 contestants, ranging from cannibalistic serial killer Hannibal Lecter to the 20-something narcissist of HBO's Girls. And that's what scares me. I've never seen this show called Girls, HBO's. But this article says that they're 20 years, they're 20 years old and they're narcissists. Well, what if I'm sitting in a restaurant or she's or some gal is behind me in a car in a big truck and she's really into this show and the demon has possessed her. And she's just a, a narcissist. And she's a sociopath and crazy. You know what I mean? I mean, you it's, see how it just affects everybody around you and, and you have no idea. Well, winner of that bracket, by the way, the most terrible person on television, was a guy named Ram Ramsey Bolton of Games of Thrones. You're going to like this. Who, as one editor wrote, has spent the majority of his screen time torturing people, feeding women to dogs, sexually assaulting the teenage Sansa Stark on the night of their forced marriage. And he does almost all of this with an impish grin on his face. Now you can't tell me that's not demonic. Until last season, Game of Thrones, with its literary pedigree and HBO halo, was unassailable. There was no level of degeneracy or debasement the audience wouldn't stomach. This was the highest art that premium cable had to offer. I mean, it sounds like I'm reading some weird fantasy story. Are you kidding me? Then came two scenes that were not in the books. First, it was the rape of Sansa Stark, which caused thousands of fans, including a member of Congress, to erupt on Twitter. So you got your politicians and your political leaders watching this trash. And Senator Claire McCaskill said, okay, I'm done with the Game of Thrones. Gratuitous rape seemed disgusting and unacceptable. But all the other stuff before that was fine. Then came the burning of a child alive at the stake by her own father. A little girl burned alive? Seriously, I honestly didn't think they'd go there, tweeted another viewer. Game of Thrones, the show that made dragons, rape, and child prostitution fashionable, wrote another. (sighs) You go HBO. Last December... Go T or got, I don't know how it's, it's G O with a capital T. So I don't know how they're pronouncing this. I'm going to say got, got director, Jeremy Paduswa, who directed the rape scene said the show's creators were responsive to the discussion. And there was a couple of things changed as a result. (laughs) 
Other showrunners are questioning their own motivations. Joe Weisberg, creator of FX's critically acclaimed The Americans, recently said he and the show's writers grapple with what's true to the characters. It may be that our sense of bad is changing. When they poisoned that kid, we couldn't believe we were having those guys do that. We have become somewhat injured ourselves. So maybe we have to up the ante for us to fill it ourselves. We have to have them kill an old lady with her own pills to make it feel so bad. Are you serious? That's, that's called demonic writing. That's called, that's called writing right from the pits of hell. That's the TV portal, folks. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that it takes so much to shock us now. Like any art form, television has much a reflection of the culture as a, as a, as a mover. Now, here's something I didn't know. I don't like this guy, Steve Harvey. I have my personal reasons why I don't like him. I haven't liked him since 2008. Um, and I know he was raised in church uh, because he used to do comedy routines and he would he would mock or you know make fun of you know these um you know old black ladies at at church and stuff but he was right on i mean cuz i was raised in those churches and i knew exactly what he was making fun of i know he was and then in 2008 he came out and said if you're black if your color if your color or your skin is black you will vote for obama and to think any other way is you're not you know you're not black and I didn't think that was right to use his 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 uh, influence as an entertainer to get people to vote for somebody without even thinking about it or even realizing who they are just because of the color of their skin. That's racist. So I've never liked Steve Harvey. And I've noticed that since he did that in 2008, his career, well, he hasn't done movies or anything like that, but he's on, he has all kinds of, he's like a a game show host. I don't know how many game shows he has two or three. I don't know. He's it's pathetic, but he's working and making and making a whole lot more money than, uh, than I am. So I think they took care of him for his endorsement of, um, the, uh, the little antichrist there, Obama. But apparently the revival of the wholesome 1970s game show family feud, which is hosted by Steve Harvey. Another one I would never watch because of him has been recently criticized for sexually explicit questions and answers. In two clips posted last September, Harvey asked a contestant to recall the last thing you stuck your finger in. And uh, the guy says, my wife. And Harvey says, my favorite answer of all time. I mean, that's, really? And then he asked, name of the first part of a woman you touched to get her in the mood. And that was asked uh, another panel. And, um, this guy says, um, that would be the lower part of the vagina, whom Harvey high-fived. He high-fived that guy. So it's, it's, it's crude. It's crude. According to a survey released last week by Ips, Ipsos Public Affairs, 78% of Americans said they often heard people cussing in public, up 35% from 10 years ago. Just 10 years ago, folks. 35% up from 10 years ago. It underscores the popularity of certain people, just potty mouth people. Uh, a Daniel Feinberg is a television critic for The Hollywood Reporter, sees the connective tissue between pop culture and the presidential election cycle as far as crudeness, lying, things like that. And he says, uh, you look at society and you clearly don't see all of them wearing white hats anymore, like they're the good guys. There's anti-heroes in the politics and in the politicians. So with few exceptions, there are scant, meaningful explorations of good and evil, action and consequence to be found in our so-called golden age of television. It's worth remembering that David Chase, who created Tony Soprano, very artfully walked his audience up through the final season in which he unmasked his anti-hero as an irredeemable psychopath in doing so he forced his audience to confront why we continue to look and overlook and excuse tony's most rehensible actions and what that says about our own susceptibilities to power charm wealth and fame you see how satan does he gets you hooked and then he goes see 
bam, look at me right in the face. Thanks for worshiping. Now you're, now you're mine. Breaking Bad. The showrunner, Vince Gilligan, did a similar thing. He made clear that his was a moral universe and Walter White, no matter his or the audience's justifications, had to be punished. He also admitted that he too once felt affection for his protagonist, but again could no longer deny that evil that Walter had done. He said, I've lost sympathy for Walter White personally. He said in 2013, right before the final season aired, my perceptions have changed. I didn't think this was going to happen. But even then, Gilligan didn't understand the unquenchable thirst for anti-heroes. Our viewing tastes are cyclical, he told Vulture. Five years from now, people might be asking, you remember when everybody used to like anti-heroes? People like the guy in the white hat again. How did that happen? Well, that's not going to happen. It's not going to cycle back. Insanity is just going to keep getting more insane. It's just it, the ante has to keep being upped. And the recent reactions to got and scandal are an indication there may be a backlash against bad behavior, or at least bad storytelling. They say at a certain point, as always happens in Hollywood or cultural in general, a set of superficial things come to stand in for quality. Because they're calling this high quality. That sex, violence, moral complication. When it's done well, it's the highest form of art. Really? If it's done poorly, and if that's all you've got, the idea that quality is tied to immorality, you enter the realm of the absurd. And once again, this article is not written by a Christian. It's written by a secularist from the New York Post. And I think she just about nailed it all. So remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The awness of God is the beginning of wisdom. Listen to him. Listen to his word. If you don't, the consequences are simple-minded feebleness and destruction. I want to end with this proverb. And uh, this is from chapter 9. This is from chapter 9. Verse 13 uh, through 18. And it's about uh, this, this woman, this, this whorish woman. Remember, it's, it's all the Babylon of, it's all the, uh, uh, the Babylonian whore. All this is Babylonian whore stuff. It's all Luciferian. She, he's the Babylonian whore. He's right. She's writing the beast. This is, this is all this entertainment. That's what it is. So when I read this, think about this woman. Think about what I just said of, on entertainment. She's the woman. It's the TV. It's what's being put out there. Verse 13 says, a woman deficient in mind. What does that mean? Deficient in mind. That means she's, she's simple. She's stupid. She's dumb. She doesn't have the intelligence of God. A woman deficient in mind is alluring and she knows no shame. That's, that's a whore. It's a harlot. She sits at the door of her house upon a high seat. Hmm. Pomp, pride, evil way. She calls passers-by in the way who go straight on their ways. See, they're trying to do the right thing, but she's going straight. And she says to them, who is it that is simple? In other words, who's stupid like me? Who's simple-minded? Who's deficient in their brain? Who's brain damaged? She continues, let him come to me and he that is deficient in his mind And then one says to her, some stupid guy says to her, stolen waters are sweet and secret bread is pleasant. And he goes to her and he does not know that mighty men perish in her presence and all that are summoned to her are in the depths of Sheol. That's where it all ends up. When you're simple minded and stupid, you listen to the simple minded, deficient in mind, Babylonian whore. In her religion, in her entertainment, in her allure to follow Satan and reject the wisdom and knowledge of God. That's why people are stupid. That's why. All right. Good night. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week, Lord willing. And we pray that you have a great week and that you're blessed, kept in peace and mercy, and that the Lord give you wisdom. Please hang up and try again. These signs will follow those who believe in my name.
They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover.